Dr. Andrew Young at St. John's, and let's take a few moments and review the data and the evidence concerning one of the most interesting questions for patients and for surgeons. And specifically, it's how we choose between a ceramic and a metal head in a total hip replacement. There's a lot of opinion and there's also a lot of data surrounding the issue, so we'll take a deeper dive into both. Okay, so as we start, the most important thing to know about this decision between a ceramic and metal head is that they are so much more similar than they are different. They both work very well in patients. So in terms of the four main issues related to metal versus ceramic, it's important to know that they are almost identical in pain relief, function, durability, and effectiveness. And it's been my experience over the past 21 years that they both work exceptionally well in patients. But let's look at the data also. I think there are three main concerns that we're going to review. Now, proponents of ceramic will often state that ceramics have better wear rates compared to metals. In other words, that they have the potential to last longer. But the data shows that there's actually no difference in wear rate. And so let's look at that in terms of active patients, in terms of the science of randomized controlled studies, and in terms of large data sets and what actually occurs in populations. Okay, so let's look at the science, specifically at the effectiveness of metal heads. Those are called cobalt chromium femoral heads on highly cross-linked polyethylenes. And this is an excellent study because it looked at patients less than 50 years old. So it really pushed patients in terms of their activity levels. And in long-term follow-up, so this is 15 years of follow-up in patients less than 50 years old, they saw that metal bearings on HXLP, this is highly cross-linked polyethylene bearings, had excellent wear properties. It was 0 0.018 millimeters per year. They had superior clinical performance and saw no wear-related revision operations. And then they were able to conclude that this construct of metal cobalt chrome on highly cross-linked polyethylene is an extremely effective bearing at 15 years in really young active patients. And we can extrapolate, so it will work even better in less active older patients. Now let's look at a randomized controlled study. So this is a, another type of study where the scientists randomized patients to receive either a ceramic head or a metal head. So in this study, prior to hip replacement, they are randomly chosen to receive a ceramic or metal femoral head. And then these patients had stereometric beads implanted in their hip to be able to precisely measure the amount of wear. And in this randomized controlled study, they saw no difference in wear rate after five years. And so they're able to conclude very confidently with the introduction of modern highly cross-linked polyethylene, the ceramic head demonstrates no superiority when it comes to either early deformation or right here, polyethylene wear compared with the metal head. So again, both work well, even under randomized conditions. So finally, uh, let's look at the last study, looking at the difference between metal and ceramic heads. So again, in my own experience, I have not seen a difference. Cohort studies looking specifically at active patients show no difference at 15 years. Randomized studies show no difference, but large studies show no difference between metal and ceramic heads in terms of wear rates. This study looked at six randomized controlled as a large study looking at large groups of patients and they found no difference in revision rates or in wear or linear or volumetric wear between metal on poly, this is MOP, or ceramic on poly bearings. So, so again, both work very well. The second major issue that often comes up in debates among surgeons about the appropriate head to use has to deal with corrosion. So the first part is wear rates, but we can see from the prior studies, there's very little difference in wear rates. They both work very well. The second has to do with the possibility of corrosion. Corrosion theoretically occurs at the junction between the femoral head and the trunnion. 
And the hypothesis is that metal heads will show an increase in corrosion compared to ceramic heads. But the data actually shows no difference in failure rates related to this mechanism. Let's take a look. This recent study that just came out in 2020 specifically looks at this question of corrosion. Specifically, the difference between metal on polyethylene versus ceramic on polyethylene. And they followed patients for up to 10 years looking at any difference in revision rates. This is a study done on a US population looking at a Medicare database. And the authors concluded that concerns with corrosion for metal heads do not appear to result in significantly elevated revision risk for metal on poly for up to 10 years. Or again, it doesn't seem like it's a substantial risk for patients. And it does not appear as a primary reason for revision compared to other mechanisms. This also reiterates which, what was found in a European study out of the National Joint Registry that metal on poly hips showed no increase in revisions for corrosions than ceramic on poly. So they both are safe and durable constructs. Uh, the final issue among surgeons in choosing between a ceramic versus metal head has to do with the material properties of the internal structure. So ceramics are crystalline, metals have metallic bonds throughout. So there's a difference in the brittleness and the toughness of the two materials. And the hypothesis is that ceramic heads will fracture. And historically, earlier ceramics made with aluminum did have an increased risk of fractures. But newer ceramics made with zirconium have a very different material strength. And so the data shows that modern ceramic heads are actually quite durable and the risk of fracture has been mitigated substantially. And then I'll show you actually how durable they are. So we actually wanted to put this idea of brittleness to the test. So I'm holding a ceramic ball in my right hand and a chrome cobalt ball in my left hand. And we wanted to understand fragility, potential brittleness, just to, by seeing what would happen if we drop them from a standing height. So let's take a look. Yeah, and you can see they're both extremely durable. The ceramic stayed intact and as expected, so did the metal ball. But let's push it a little further. But we wanted to test this a little bit further. We wanted to put the ceramic through a tougher test by exposing it to more force. And we did this by increasing the height of the fall. So I stood on a desk. Let's take a look and see what happens when we cer expose ceramic to increased forces. Yeah, and we can see that the ceramic and the metal maintain their shape. So even though this is theoretically more brittle, it is more than durable enough to withstand the force of a fall from an elevated height. But let's push this even a little bit further. So we really wanted to push the boundaries of this and see what happens when we drop it from an extreme height. Here I am in the second floor. I have a ceramic and a metal ball. Let's see what happens when we drop it from the second story. So again, this is a little bit harder to see. You see the ceramic ball here, you see the metal ball here. They're falling, they're falling. And yeah, they're fine. Nothing breaks. Uh, let me show you a close up. Okay, so let's take a look after the fall. You can see in a close up, both look undamaged. This is ceramic, this is the metal. They're both completely intact. So you can see, even though there are theoretical concerns of brittleness, just like there were theoretical concerns of increased wear or corrosion with this, both are extremely durable. So that brings us all the way back to the original question and why it's so difficult. How do you choose? And it's difficult when both work well. If one was clearly superior, it would be an easy choice, but you can only pick one. You can only pick a metal ball or a ceramic ball. And again, the difference is the difficulty is both work really well. Both are safe, both are durable in terms of wear, in terms of toughness and avoiding brittleness. 
And even in Medicare data, we see an even distribution in utilization. About half Medicare patients in the United States get a ceramic on poly, half get a metal on poly, and both subgroups are doing very well. However, we also note that ceramics are gaining in popularity. It's interesting, if we look back 10 years, over 90% of hips were metal on polyethylene. But for reasons I don't completely understand, ceramics are gaining in popularity and now it's 50-50. The big difference, however, is that ceramics, because they are theoretically more brittle, come in fewer sizing options. Metal has much more optionality in terms of recreating an anatomic reconstruction. And this is the biggest factor that influences our surgical decision making. Okay, and please remember, this, this video is purely for education and to review the evidence and the data. This is not particular medical advice to your specific situation. Instead, you should talk to your surgeon about the best bearing option for you. And having said that, I'll just share what we do in general. And every patient is different. Every patient encounter is unique. But overall, we plan to use the bearing that a patient requests. Patient requests ceramic, we try to use ceramic. And if patient requests metal, we try to use metal. However, most patients really have no preference for either and they leave the decision to the surgeon judgment and experience. And this is what I would recommend for most patients watching this. Leave the decision to the surgeon's judgment and experience for the best possible outcome. Given that, because the metal ball comes in a far greater number of sizing options, it just comes in more sizes. The metal ball will be chosen more often because it can more accurately restore the anatomy of hip length and offset. It's often the best choice in reconstructing the mechanics of the hip, given that there are more sizing options. Now, if a patient has requested a ceramic ball, we will do our best to restore the anatomy as accurate as possible, given that there are fewer sizing options available. So in summary, ceramic metal heads both work extremely well. They are almost identical in terms of safety, durability, pain relief, and function. Now, surgeons, patients have raised concerns about metal heads not wearing as well or being more susceptible to corrosion, but the data shows that they actually do quite well. Others have raised concerns that ceramics are more brittle, more fragile, but the data shows and the evidence shows that they're actually quite resilient. So both of these work very well. I don't think you can make a bad choice. And I would, of course, leave the decision up to the surgeon's judgment and experience to restore your anatomy as precisely as possible during your hip replacement. Thanks.